Howdy guys. All right. So in this video, what we're going to do is we are going to continue our tank controller and to get things going with our scripting, what we need to do is we need to stub in the scripts and talk about why we are going to structure the scripts the way that we are going to do it. So let's hop over into unity and get going. Okay. So first things first, let's actually position our camera here. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the camera. Okay. And I'm going to hold down control shift F. And what that's going to do is it's going to position the main camera to wherever my scene view camera is. So this is the scene view camera, the one I'm rotating right now. And this is the game camera that we have, or it's usually called the main camera. Of course, you can name it whatever you want. It doesn't need to be called main camera, but it usually comes with the main camera tag. All right. So it's just another type of thing that you can search for. Uh, but you know, we're not really going to dive into that just yet. So uh, what we want to do is we want to get our scripts stubbed in here and talk about why we're going to structure it the way that we're going to structure it. So um, we are going to have a tank controller, okay? And this tank controller is going to have a rigid body on it. So that means we need to have a tank controller script. So inside of our code folder here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say right click and I'm going to say create C sharp script, all right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say IP for the prefix, and that stands for Indie Pixel. And this is just a way that I can identify whether or not it's a script I create or it's a script that someone else created. Okay, I'm going to do underscore. And we're going to call this the tank underscore controller. Okay. All right, so that is our first step. But what I want to do is I want to separate out the functionality between the inputs, okay, and the actual controller. So the controller is going to be responsible for moving the tank itself and rotating the turret up here okay controlling the the gun and everything like that okay but what I want to do is I want to put all the functionality for grabbing the user input into a different script and the reason why I like to do this is because it separates the different types of concerns okay you might have heard that before the separation of concerns that way we can focus all of our code on just inputs and then we can focus all of our code on just controller stuff okay and just handling the rigid body Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and right click again, say create C sharp script, IP, uh, tank inputs. All right, like so. Okay, cool. So with that, we've got our, our scripts created. What we need to do now is we need to pop these open inside of Visual Studio. All right, and get them stubbed in because I'm going to create a little bit of an interaction here. So when I go and drag and drop the tank controller script onto my tank, I want it to actually do a little bit of setup. Okay, so let's go through and do that now. All right, so there we go. And this is the default code that is inserted into our scripts when we create a, a C sharp script inside of Unity. So the first thing that I usually do when I go and create a script um, is I put it into a namespace. All right, and the namespace is there so that way we can separate our code from other people's code. All right, so what I like to do is I like to put it underneath, you know, Indie Pixel as the namespace. So I would go and create Indie Pixel. But in this case, because I've already created the tank scripts um, and I put them inside of the namespace Indie Pixel, I'm just going to, for the video's sake, put it underneath the tank demo namespace. Now, the reason why we use namespaces is to protect our code from clashing with other classes that have the same name, all right? So the class here called IP tank controller, if I were to put it underneath the indie pixel namespace, all right, so let's do that really quick. Come in here and we'll call this the indie pixel. What's gonna happen is you're gonna get some clashing because it already contains a definition. It already contains the same class, all right? So that's why I'm putting it underneath the tank demo. And it's really useful so that way you can have classes that are named the same. They're just in different namespaces. So it's, I like to think of them as like a folder. All right. So I have indie pixel and then you could have a namespace of like tank demo dot vehicles. Right. And that's a, a subfolder. It's like a child folder and inside of there. You have a bunch of different code and stuff like that. Um, it's also very useful when dealing with um, assets and code that come from the Uni unity asset store. Uh, because sometimes, you know, we have classes that are just named the same, all right? And so this helps protect your code and your classes from other classes and code that you pull in from other sources, all right? So what I want to do now is I want to create a little bit of an interaction. So 
if you've used Unity at all, you know, before, you might start to realize that the, you do a lot of dragging and dropping of components, uh, like rigid bodies or colliders or effects or scripts and stuff like that. And it, it's really a good idea to start to automate some of that dragging and dropping so you can spend more time, you know, designing your game. All right, so one way that we can do this is we can utilize the require component uh, attribute up here for the classes. And what we do is we say require component, put it and give it a type. All right, and this type of, right, is looking for a type of class or a component. All right, so a rigid body is a type of component and a class inside of Unity. Okay, so I know that I want a rigid body to be attached to this particular class when I go and drag and drop the IP tank controller class or component onto my tank. Okay, so I can automate that by telling it that I want to put a rigid body on this. It's required by this particular script. Okay, the other thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that it comes with the input script as well. So again, we're going to use that require component. We're going to say type of, and we're going to say IP tank inputs. All right. So while we're at it here, uh, let's go back into Unity over here and let's pop open the tank inputs. All right, and let's just put it under the same namespace of tank demo, like so, okay? That way they live in that same namespace, that same folder, all right? Okay, so with that, we are pretty much ready to go. A good idea at this point is to get some basic functionality in place. So. Now that we know that we're going to require the inputs, we're going to require the rigid body to be attached to this particular component or this tank object when we put this class onto it, let's store those variables. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a couple regions here. These are C-sharp regions, okay? And I do this to keep my code nice and organized. Um, it also allows you to collapse them or fold the code, okay? So, what I'm going to do is say region, and these are our built-in methods, so these come with every mono behavior inside of Unity. Okay, so I'm going to space them out a little bit. I always like to give it a little bit more space so I can read my code. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to store this rigid body and these inputs here into a variable so we can access them. All right, we can do stuff with them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say private rigid body, and I'm going to call it RB. So this is the type. All right, this is the accessibility level, meaning if it were public, then any other script inside of Unity would be able to see this rigid body that's attached to this particular tank controller. Okay, but I'm keeping it private so it's locked out. It's only accessible within this script. Okay, and I'm giving it a name of RB, and it's just short for rigid body. You can name it whatever you want. You know, you could call it my rigid body if you want. RB is a lot easier to type <laughs> and a lot faster, especially when you do a lot of coding inside of Unity. All right, so what I'm going to do now is store the tank inputs, and I'm just going to call it input. All right, I try to keep these as short as possible or as descriptive as possible. Those are my two kind of criteria when I'm coming up with variable names, okay? All right, so what we want to do now that we have these variables is we need to actually put a reference, all right? We need to put an object into them because these variables, they hold data, okay? And so we need to put something into them. So inside of this start method, okay, so the start method runs right when the game starts, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that the RB is equal to get component, all right, and we're going to type in the type and then just put the parentheses at the end there, okay, and what this is doing is it's going to look on this particular object, okay, whatever this script is sitting on, this game object inside of Unity. It's going to look for this type of class or this type of component. And if it's there, it's going to put it into this rigid body so we can access it throughout our entire script here. So let's do the same for the input. So we're going to say input is equal to get component IP tank inputs, like so. So it's, again, that's looking for the component. And if it's there, all right, it's going to put it into the component. But because we're putting this require component, we are pretty much ensured that it's going to be there. Okay. So now, with that, we're pretty much good to go. All right. So we have our tank inputs all set up. We have the controller all set up. And that's, a, you know, our bare bones setup. But let's go back in Unity and 
take a look at how this works. Okay, so we've done all that setup work. So let's see the end result of doing all that kind of automation setup. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the tank model here, or the game object, and I'm going to go and just simply drag and drop the tank controller onto this particular object, and this is fine. It's bundled up as a prefab, so it's just going to break it. And voila, there we have it. Automatically, we have the tank inputs, and we have the rigid body. And I usually like to have the tank inputs at the top, or the input script at the top there. But what that did is it alleviated the need to drag and drop or create the rigid body component, and I didn't have to drag and drop the input script onto it. And that all came from using that require components. And if we hit run or play in the editor, it'll store the rigid body and the input script into these variables so we can access them. All right, so what I'm going to do is close out the video there. And in the next video, we're going to continue on and start building out some more functionality. Okay, thanks so much.